All right, guys. So the next part of this is we're going to actually get this guy to uh, instantiate and shoot uh, a little spheroid. Um, you know, because Mega Man, he can basically run, he can jump, and he can shoot. Uh, kind of standard platform repair. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to create what is going to be our bullet. So our game object, create other, and I want to create a sphere. Uh, I'm going to scale it down to about half size here, so 0.5 and then 0.5. Um, because it's going to be a projectile, it's going to be something that we're going to um, end up shooting someplace. Uh, we want it to react with things. Uh, I want to make create a, uh, a rigid body so that we'll end up adding force to this that will help control it. So what I want to do is go to component and then physics and then rigid body and you'll see that it's going to pop up here. Now, one of the classic things in the old school games is that uh, unlike modern shooters where everything has to have realistic ballistics and all that kind of stuff, most of those old games things just kind of flew out in a linear line. So instead of using gravity, I want to turn this off so that when the projectile flies it's going to fly straight. Uh, we can come back later and create maybe a special grenade shell or, or something along those lines that we can use uh, to kind of spruce things up a little bit. Um, but at the moment, turning uh, gra uh, gravity off. Second thing is uh, mass. Well, we'll leave mass at one at the moment. But we may want to change that in a little while. So here's our sphere. I'm going to rename this thing um, bullet. All right, so that's going to be our, our bullet. Uh, now, remember, this is going to be our bullet, and it's going to end up becoming a, a, a prefab. Uh, what I mean by prefab, it's a prefabricated object. Um, whereas all these are, are single instances, if we create a turn this into a prefabricated object, that means that it will be able to be dragged off of our project into our hierarchy, into our scene, uh, multiple times, have them all be the exact same. It's really great for, for uh, cloning stuff. So in order to turn this into a uh, prefab, what I want to do is drag it down. Just drag it down into the gray space in my assets. Boom, bada, bing, and the thing turns blue. Okay, that that's the so sign right there that you have a prefabricated object is when it turns blue. All right, so one thing to note, if I go into my bullet and I turn gra use gravity on on this bullet, well, that's great. It's going to use gravity, but any sequent any other uh, prefabs that I draw are not going to be using gravity. If I want them all to use gravity, I need to make sure I select in the assets panel in my project panel um, use gravity. Okay. So any changes you want to make to that to these objects or these future objects, you want to make sure you do it in the project pane versus in the hierarchy. Hierarchy is only what's already in the scene. Okay. So right now we have our bullet, we have our bullet prefab, and what we need to do now is we need to set things up for our character. Okay. So in order to do this with our character, what I want to do is go into Playmaker. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add an FSM. So I have our start state and our state one. And we want to go into our state one and we need to add an action. Okay, so right now it's going to go straight to state one and we want it to wait for us to keep make a key press. So I'm going to go to action browser, go to input, and under input I want to get, use get key down. Not get button down, this is for joysticks. We want get key down, this is going to work for uh, our keyboard. Add that action to the state. And from there I want to change, let's just use Z. I always thought that was a good key. Uh, this brings up the whole list of different keys that, that are that you can use. Uh, if you type in the key or whatever, it'll it'll link to it and get to it real quick. Uh, and from Z, we want it to send an event. So let's create an event by going to the event event menu. Uh, let's try fire, right? Hit make sure you hit enter. That's our event. Go back and tell it to send fire. Okay, so. It's yelling at us that there's no state that it's going to be using. So let's go ahead and add a second state. So add a state. This will be state two. And let's add a transition. Right click, add transition, fire, and then drag to connect these two. Just like that. All right, so everything's going to stop yelling. Um, now just to go ahead and test this, I'm going to right click, add a finished. Okay, capital F-I-N-I-S-D-E-D. Finished means that whenever this one gets done doing whatever it's going to do, it's going to, we want it to move through to another state. In this case, we want it to go back to the start. I want it to be ready to fire again. So if we go ahead and hit play, all right, nothing's really going on, so I'm going to hit Z. And as I hit Z, you'll see that it's firing off that state. Okay, so that's the first thing we know that everything's working all right as far as our get our pressing the buttons. All right, so 
next step we want to do is go ahead and get this uh, get this thing shooting stuff. So what I want to do is go over to my action browser on my new my state two, and I want to go to game object and I want to create a game object. If we were scripting this, we'd be using uh, instantiate, but in under uh, Playmaker, it's called create. So we're going to add that action to the state, and that's going to bring up a list of a whole bunch of bells and whistles in this create object. All right, it's going to ask us for a game object, a spawn point, position, rotation, a store object, and some network stuff. Right now, we just want to worry about the game object itself. So I want to click on the little the little thing that's like a target, click on that, and then I want to make sure I go to my assets, not scene. Let's go to assets for the moment uh, and choose bullet, okay? Because we want the prefab bullet, not the uh, bullet that's in the scene. So double click on that bullet. It's going to load it in here. Right now it has no spawn point. Uh, we'll add one of those in a moment, but let's just see how this thing functions. All right, so now if I hit play and I start hitting Z, it's just kind of spawning these projectiles just in the middle of, of everywhere, right? So first next thing we need to do is we need to add something where they're going to actually come from our, our, our player here. So let's go to our player and we need a spawn point okay, for our projector. Uh, so what I want to do is go to game object, create empty. Okay, Whenever you want to stick some, something in, the, in Unity that you don't necessarily need to see, you don't need to find, uh, it just needs to kind of sit there in space or if it needs to be used as an emitter or just a, just a point in space that you need for something or you need to attach things to creating an empty game object is the way you do that. So in this case we create this empty game object. I'm going to call this thing uh, spawn point uh, just for ease of ease of use and I'm going to parent it or make it a child of our player. So I'm just going to grab it right under here like so and now it is going to be bound to the player. So here's our spawn point okay and here's our player. They happen to be in the exact same place, so let's move our spawn point out just a little ways, like so. And uh, now you have the player and the spawn point. Now, let's te if we test this, what you'll see is that as I move the player around, what's going to happen is is that spawn point, yes, it's re it's re rotating, um, but it's also tracking with our controller. Okay, uh, again, we'll go back and we'll, we'll set this up in, in a minute. Um, but the uh, main thing we want is make sure that that's parented. So, next step we want to do is go back to our player, go back to our state 2. Here's our, here's our spawn point. Let's go down and uh, make sure that uh, our scene spawn point is selected as our object. And so now, if we hit play, what happens is, is it's going to spawn right out in front of our object. Okay. Let's get rid of this guy. He's uh, he's kind of blocking the, the mojo. So here's our guy. He's moving and it's spawning these little rigid bodies out in front of him. All right. So now our spawn point's working. The next thing we need to do is we need to add some sort of force to our projectiles. Okay. We need to make sure that it's traveling away from our object or our player instead of just you know sitting there and, and looking pretty. So what I want to do is I want to go down to the state to this create object. Go to Action Browser, and because it is a rigid body, we can use physics on it. So what I actually want to do on the physics is I want to add a force. Okay, adds a force to a game object uses a vec three or a float variable for each axis. So I'm going to add that action to the state. And the game object I'm wanting it to use is not the owner. The owner here would be player. That would be bad. What we want it to use is we want to specify a game object. Okay. But now the issue we're going to have is if we set this to be bullet, all right, that's going to be either the bullet in the scene, which would be affecting this bullet, or it would be the bullet in our asset list, okay, uh, which would be a prefabricated, not created yet bullet. What we need to do is we need to store the bullet that we're going to shoot in a variable that we can call back that specific bullet and add a force to it. All right. The way that we do that is where it says store object here that was currently set to none. We need to go to variables under new variable. Call this one uh, say my bullet, right? My bullet. And instead of it being a float, change that to a game object. Come back over. Go to store object, my bullet, 
and then down here specify my object and instead of hitting this tab I want to hit the little equal sign to use a variable and set it to be my bullet. That's going to add a force to the bullet or, or uh, at least that's going to that's going to be uh, the that's going to reference the bullet that we just created um, inside the game and then allow us to add the force to it. So I'm going to try the x-axis right now. So let's go and set a force of, let's, let's say 100 and see what kind we have. And the next thing I want to do is force mode is force and space is, is world. Let's change that to self because I would rather it be traveling along its facing axis versus the global axis. Um, basically it's the difference between local space and global space. Whenever you see an object moving and the arrows are moving with it, that means it's set into local mode. Whenever you see the object and the arrows always stay true to their continental directions, that's going to be world mode. In the case of this projectile, we want to make sure it's on the self mode because whichever way it is truly setting is going its face, we want it to continue in that direction. So even when we're shooting it that way, all the bullets are going to travel this direction. When it's facing it the other direction, we want it traveling that way too without having to change up uh, our vector math and, and all that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So moving around and shooting. Yep, there we go. Hey, it works, right? They're moving very, very slowly. Let's see if we can speed these guys up. If I go to my project, go to bullet, and change that mass to a, let's say a 0.1, right? Let's see what kind of a result we get over on this one now. So there we go. There's some, there's some high rate of fire. All right. These, these, guys, these guys works. All right, so now one other problem with our bullet at the moment is the fact that if you noticed, every single time I hit the button, it's shooting and I'm creating a whole bunch of clones. Okay, as a matter of fact, I'm creating so many clones that eventually I'm going to lock up, crash, or slow down the bad things that would happen to our game. So the next step is we need to remove some of these things from memory. Well, the easiest way to do that is to just start killing these bullets. So what I want to do is go to my project, and here's my bullet, and I want to make sure we can add an FSM. All right, so since he's already in a prefab position, what I want to do is go down to Add Component, click on Playmaker, and go to Playmaker FSM. All right, and so now that bullet has that. Let's go to Vector Playmaker tab. Now, want to select bullet prefab and now here's our prefab FSM for our bullet prefab okay the not created one yet so what we want this guy to do is we want to make sure it'll kill itself so the first thing we need to do is go to action browser and what I want to do is add a let's see here a time and a wait so I'm going to add a time and a wait and what I wanted to do is after about say three seconds I want it to be finished. So I add an event, call it die, <laughs> and then uh, add die to it. So we can add a state two. Okay, and then this state two is going to be basically kill self. Okay, so add transition die, grab it to kill self. And all kill self is going to do is go to game object and where it says destroy self that's what we want to add so destroy destroy self that's going to be the uh, second state and after a wait of three it's going to die the second thing we want to have happen though is if this thing has a collision or it comes in contact with something we also want it to uh, destroy them we don't want it bouncing all around the scene we want it to hit something and, and disappear so what we want to do is add an action browser go to uh, physics and where it says collision event, so we want to create is a collision event. Make sure we put this at the top in front of wait, not wait at the end. So we basically want to have a collision event, and if that happens, it's going to kill self. And if not, it's going to be waiting three seconds, and then it's going to kill it's kill self. So either way, it's kind of a fail safe. So on collision enter, we want to send event die. And there you go for the moment. There we go. So if it collides with something, it'll die. And if uh, it just waits, it'll also die. So now when we hit the button, you're going to see I'm creating some clones. And they all start disappearing again. Okay. 
So let's see if the collision side works. So if I go to game object, create other, uh, just give me a cube, we'll point this thing out this direction. So shoot out this direction. There you go. So they're all dying as soon as they make contact with that cube. All right. So there are some bugs with it. There are some more tweaks that we need to do as far as setting up the, uh, making sure we're shooting in two directions instead of um, three. Um, a spray fire in a, in a 2D platformer probably wouldn't work too well. Uh, we'll fix those in the next video and, uh, and all that. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope everybody understands about how to create this, uh, get our controller and shooting. Uh, see you in a bit.